What's special about this project, Jim? What's the timeline for being able to start Breaking doing this? Good morning, Heidi. Um, well, yeah, the, the project that's being proposed would be the largest of its kind anywhere in the southern hemisphere. There, there are one or two um, in development in, uh, in the northern uh, hemisphere, but this, this is certainly by far the biggest for, for Australia, and, and they've got broader ambitions than that. They've signed up a number of uh, heavyweight Japanese companies, including Tokyo Gas, um, Osaka Gas also. Um, so th th what's, what's new about this is that we, ha we do have onshore CCF projects in Australia, but this is the first that, that really explores the potential to, to inject CO2 under the sea. And there are certain advantages to this. Um, Australia is well known as a huge uh, gas ex exporter. A lot of those gas fields are, are based off, off the coast. So there's a lot of um, really good ge um, seismic geological data available to people to find the best possible areas to store the CO2 under the, under the sea. So they're hoping to use that data and, and find the sort of most optimal places to put it. And in terms of timeline, um, the developer transporters has, has been, not been um, too, um, too clear on that so far. I think it's going to take a while uh, for them to sort of get this together. Uh, probably four or five years, you, you would hope that they, you know, that they would, we would get some traction with it. And of course, they're in competition with another project um, called Carbon Net, which is based um, off the southeast coast, which is planning to, um, to store as much as five million tonnes of carbon dioxide under the Bass Strait off the country's south. East Coast, and they're targeting 2030 for a start-up there. So I think we're talking within the next decade that there should be a C an offshore CO2 um, CCS project in Australia. So, Jim, what are the advantages of storing CO2 under the sea as opposed to storing it underground? Well, if you look around the world, a lot of the projects that look to, to, to do offshore CCS, um, they're based on the fact that it's, it can be expensive to find the land needed, and you, you have to have, obviously, you have to have the right geological composition that can be tricky. That's not been such a huge problem in Australia. Obviously, there's huge land mass. Uh, available land is not an issue. But as I mentioned before, uh, a lot of Australia's gas exploration has been based offshore. So we have that, just that rich body of data um, for, to find the, um, the optimal areas in, under the sea for that geolo the, 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 what makes the most sense geologically to put the CO2 under the ground. So that's why I think these, these developers are focusing on that. Um, certainly, um, that is the main, you know, the main reason. Of course, the, uh, the problem, the slight problem with offshore is it, it is a little bit more expensive to do anything offshore compared to onshore. Um, drilling tends to cost a lot as well. Um, so that is one issue that the developers will have to get around. But I think that, you know, they're, they're hoping that you know, just because of all that data there, that it will be cost effective.